parents were both economists, and so I guess I was doomed to become an economist. I was born in the U.S., but at the age of two, we went abroad uh, because my father worked for the United Nations. So we lived in Chile, Peru, Brazil, Guatemala, also Pakistan and Italy. And from a very young age, I was happy to consider myself a citizen of the world. My parents retired back in the U.S. when the time came. I was already living here. And at some point, uh, my mother, who had been widowed, moved up to Pennsylvania so that I could be near her as the oldest daughter, as is typically the case. She did great for about 10 years, but then when she turned 80, I noticed that she began to have problems. First of all, with her medication. So I bought some of those pill bottles where you can take them you know, every day. And that sort of worked out. And then I noticed that she was writing checks, the same check over and over again for the same bill, not noticing that she had previously paid the bill. Then I noticed that she wasn't paying her credit cards. So at that point, I had to take over. So I got power of attorney and got involved in her bank accounts and so on. The one thing that I wished that she had had, which she did not, was an annuity. Now, she did have the good fortune to have a defined benefit pension from my father's United Nations job, but it didn't cover her expenses in the nursing home. So as the executrix of her estate and as the oldest daughter, I wish she had had an annuity to just make sure that her monthly expenses were covered. Unfortunately, by then, it was already too late. It's very much the case that in order to achieve higher expected rates of return, pension funds over the last 30 years have gotten into new types of investments, including private equity and hedge funds and alternatives and less liquid investments. As a result, um, they have the possibility of earning higher returns, but they're also riskier returns. And so it's been quite problematic. Um, in some cases, it's required taxpayers to throw in additional contributions to help keep the pension plans on a funded trajectory. Otherwise, um, during times that the market's tanked, pension funds have done pretty poorly. Well, it's interesting because in the defined benefit world, the way that people got their benefits was as a monthly income check for life. That was the standard, that was the default. Whereas we've now moved into this defined contribution world where people see their lump sum at retirement and they think, ooh, I'm rich. I believe that a lot of times people have lump sum illusion. That is, they think, oh, I have $100,000, I'm, I'm really well off. What they don't realize for example, if they were a male age 65 with $100,000, that would buy them a lifetime income stream of about $650 a month, which is not a whole lot to live on if that's all you're going with. If you have Social Security on top of that, if you've already paid off your house, fine. You know, maybe that's in the ballpark. But $100,000 isn't really a lot to try to live for the next 30 years on. And I think that's something that we have to understand. Well, we've actually been running some experiments lately where uh, these are online, where we uh, present people with different scenarios, or I call them vignettes, they're little stories. So imagine Mr. Smith is 40 years old now, he's going to retire at age 65, he'll have $100,000 um, and a Social Security benefit. Um, what would you recommend? Would you recommend that he save a little bit more? a lot more, um, et cetera. So we present all these different moving parts in a scenario. Um, then we also have an older Mr. Smith. He's already age 65. And he can either take all of his money out of his 401k plan, or he can take out some of it and then pay himself a monthly income, i.e. an annuity the rest of his life. Um, and then we have a prime, a prompt. And the prompt is, by the way, the typical American male, age 65, will survive 18 more years on average. So that's the life expectancy prompt, right, which doesn't really emphasize the fact that you could live a lot longer. And then alternatively, we gave some people a prompt that said, please note that 22% of American men, age 65, 
will survive to the age of 90 or older. And what we found is that when we gave people the life expectancy prompt, they weren't any more likely to recommend that Mr. Smith save more or do anything special. But when we taught them that longevity risk was a potential problem, then they told poor Mr. Smith that he better start saving a lot more because he's going to need it. And so what this shows is that A, people kind of get life expectancy because it's talked about a lot. B, they don't understand longevity. And C, they can be persuaded to think about longevity and that will change their advice to poor Mr. Smith and presumably to themselves as well. The people I think would be least likely to buy an annuity or need an annuity would be very poor people and very wealthy people. Obviously, Jeff Bezos is not going to need an annuity. He can self-finance whatever he needs. And people at the very bottom of the earnings distribution probably don't have a lot of money to set aside to buy themselves a retirement income stream. Moreover, people at the bottom of the earnings distribution tend to have much higher Social Security replacement rates so that they're going to be getting relatively more from Social Security than higher earners. So it's really the people in the middle, from the 25th percentile, let's say, to the 75th or 80th percentile, where the Social Security benefit will be something, though it might be reduced by a third if Congress doesn't act. And so what we're talking about is the need for a slice of longevity contingent income above that. So as I said, you, it's helpful to do a budget, figure out what your basic spending needs are, figure out how much above your Social Security income that is, and then buy yourself another slice of an annuity on top of that. And then beyond that, obviously you can do other investments or buy presents for your grandchildren or travel or what have you if we ever get to travel again. Um, but it's really to make sure that you don't have to sweat your basic needs and covering that expenditure uh, amount.